so um, yeah, so this is the question. It says the quantity of charge through a conductor is modeled as Q, this quantity. And um, if as you are reading it, if all of it didn't fully make sense, um, I agree with you. <laughs> this is a terribly worded textbook question. Um, and what it comes down to is, how do I put it? Um, so this is this is what you've seen in the lecture. In the lecture, I was really careful in how I define current. We define current as amount of charge that flows per unit time. From time to time, you might see an expression that looks like this. Current is the time derivative of charge. And what I will tell you is that there's only one context where an equation like this actually makes sense. And that is the context with the capacitor. On a capacitor, you can talk about charge on the capacitor. Uh, it's a shorthand meaning I got plus Q and minus Q on the capacitor, and there's actual amount of charge here you can talk about. And that amount of charge could be a function of time. If it is, you can take a derivative and get the current through capacitor. So that's the only context where it makes sense. And the way this particular question is worded, it doesn't make it clear that it's this context. Because imagine this uh, had given you only a constant value, 6.00 millicoulomb. And it's like, so 6.00 millicoulomb per what? It, did that pass through and just to, uh, Nothing ever happened thereafter, so you get zero current. Or is it six millicoulombs flowing through every second? And um, so, so anyways, we did that rant. <laughs> the way to get an answer that they will uh, grade as correct is to um, is to take the derivative of this function. That's what they intend as the correct answer. So let me just obtain that answer. And I'm gonna do it with the sage math. Uh, wait, I defined the wrong variable. Let me define time t. I can say Q uh, being, uh, let me just write out the function of time. 0 0.004 times T to the fourth power minus 0 0.015 times T plus a six um, millicoulomb. And I guess I'm, uh, do I assume these are terrible units? So this is the part that drops off. So I think, uh, Oh, wait, wait, wait. So I, I think the way it's best understood is all of this is a quantity uh, with a unit of millicoulomb. So I, I think that makes sense. Um, okay, so that's my expression for amount of charge. And I can take the derivative. I wonder if this will work. Uh, yeah, 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 I can take a derivative. So derivative of this quantity as a function of time and I can just quickly check, and this is what I would get if I took derivative of this using power rule. Yeah, good. So all I have to do is plug in numbers. Let me just go back to this and substitute in time equals 3.89 seconds. Now, the only thing to be careful with is uh, this quantity here, it's in unit of millicoulomb per second. So you have to convert from uh, an ampere, one ampere, is coulombs per second. So if they were asking the for the answer in the unit of milliampere, then I could just give this, but because it's not, I had to convert from milliampere to ampere. So it's gonna have, a, you know, it's gonna be smaller by a factor of a thousand. So it will be 0 0.927, 10 to the power of minus three, accounting for conversion from uh, milliampere to ampere. So, and wait, what? There might be a error. To, uh, yeah. I'll do that. Uh, so there's a bunch of things to be fixed. Uh, <laughs> let me take care of that offline. <laughs> um, so uh, again, I, I did have some issues with the question and I'm pretty sure a uh, big chunk of it is a textbook issue. So I will, File on Arata with OpenStax and uh, look for this question. File on Arata and do all that um, <laughs> offline. Let me do the next question. Question 3 1. Uh, okay. It asks 
what is the resistance of a 16 meter long piece of a 10 gauge copper wire having oh, okay good good i was thinking i had to look up what gauge is but they actually told me uh what the diameter so so these two uh, pieces they duplicate the information if you look up what 10 width of the 10 gauge wire is it'll tell you that this is the diameter okay um so they are asking for resistance and they've given this a geometric information and um as you might remember from reading through the textbook there is a way to calculate resistance of a wire through from the material property of the wire through this relationship. The resistance R, this is an object property. It's what a particular physical object uh, can have. Can be calculated from what's called resistivity. It's a property of material, and we usually use letter rho. Uh, it, it looks like P, it's not. <laughs> it sounds, it's a Greek letter that sounds like R. So, rho. We also use it for density. Here, it's not density. It's resistivity. And the geometric factors come in this form. You can almost guess it, you know, if a material is longer, it feels like it should have a more resistance. If it has a wider width, it feels like it should have resistance. And if you are guessing it this way, uh, it'll turn out to be right. Um, so what I need is I need the resistivity of copper. Uh, does the hint give me resistivity of copper? Um, uh, given in table 9.1. All right, so I have to look it up. Let's look it up. <laughs> uh, so going down to table 9.1. Okay, it's this one. Yeah, they list both the conductivity and resistivity. Make sure looking up the right one. It's a reciprocal of each other. Uh, copper, okay. So copper's resistivity is that number, 1.68 times 10 to the minus 8. And I'm just going to make sure I know the units, uh, ohm times meter. And that seems right. When I multiply this by length per area, that will cancel out a factor of meter and will give me the, uh, help me end the correct unit. Okay, so I think I have everything. Um, I think I'm going to do all the math in SageMath because um, all I really need is a formula for area. Uh, so let me write it in terms of the diameter. Um, so area of a circle, I'm assuming it's got a circular cross section, is uh, pi times radius, which is diameter divided by 2 squared. So that's formula for area. Um, let me just define the variable L so I can use it in my expression and define rho as 1.68 times 10 to the power of minus 8. Okay, so I can say my resistance R is equal to length, uh, length divided by area times rho. And if I just look at the value of R, it'll you know, have all that. Let me just plug in the numbers. I'm going to substitute in length of uh, 16 meters, um, pi, I think I can leave that alone, uh, and diameter of, I'm going to convert from 2.588 to meter, millimeters to meters as I plug it in. So it'll be 2.588 times 10 to the power of minus 3 meters, conversion from meter, millimeter to meters. I think that's all the numbers. Let me see if it keeps, yeah, it keeps the pi, so I'm going to have to pass it through. Uh, the decimal approximation function. It gives me 0 0.0511 uh, ohm. It's pretty small, and I guess that makes sense. Copper is a pretty conductive. This sounds like a thick wire, and 16 meters is not that long. So, good. Um,